Hi guys, my name is Floor Extraordinaire, and I wanted to talk about CK3's The Royal Court as kind of a Forex lover and a strategy game lover in general, and someone that has a fair bit of experience with CK2. Uh, I've been interested in CK3, but it kind of put me off with how slow and, I guess, viscous, <laughs> to describe things for a lack of a better word, the initial year or so of launch that CK3 had. I've just kind of been disappointed in the lack of content, and The Royal Court... Um, for all its faults seems to be a massive expansion. I wanted to break down what's in it, why I'm excited for the Royal Court, and what it really gives players to kind of work with. I feel like it's one of the biggest expansions Paradox has ever released. But as a player, um, I'm just really excited for a lot of the features like the RP features, the new cultures, and all of that stuff. It just gives the player to kind of role play and interact with your own citizens and kind of create a living, uh, breathing world, or at least uh, further that illusion of one. So the first biggest detail that is coming to the Royal Court is cultures. I've mentioned it before, but cultures in CK2 weren't exactly as dynamic as the Royal Court is going to make them. Uh, cultures did have a few things going for them. They had their own retinues. They had some unique buildings, if I remember correctly, but they weren't as dynamic. They didn't fluctuate as much. I mean, there was some growth and decline with cultures, but you couldn't interact with them and mold them kind of like clay. Um, as you can with CK3's The Royal Court. For example, you can now hybridize cultures. You can color your own culture. You can choose uh, whether you want your culture to be more pacifist or theological. Perhaps you want it to be militant to help further your retinues. Um, you can do all of that, and it's quite a lot like what Holy Fury did for CK2, where it's taking a system that's been in the game since launch and it's doing a drastic revamp. In fact, it brings back some memories of Holy Fury's uh, reformation mechanics and how that kind of changed religion as a whole, and for that matter, um, how the, reform the reformation and hybridization that you can do with cultures in CK3 kind of relates to that, and it reminds me a lot um, back to CK2's later days before we went on to CK3. For role players, this rework allows you to change your own equipment. Um, you can do crazy fusions like the, this on screen, the Norse Indian hybrids. You could do something like a Chinese French hybrid. You could do all of this crazy crap and it completely fit with the wacky nature that Crusader games tend to have. Um, or you could go with a more historical route. You could forbid yourself from uh, hybridizing with other um, distant cultures. And perhaps if you wanted to be something like a German noble, you forbid yourself from doing that and just reform the German culture as a whole. It's really all up to you. And that's what I love about um, the dynamics and just the accessibility that this expansion seems to give you. I could very well be wrong, but it seems like this is taking cultures and relics, which I'll get on to a bit later into an entire new direction and i'm just loving the freeform uh, ability that the devs are giving the players and the amount of modding potential really that's being opened up to the modding community as a whole now i did mention relics and something the devs seem to be very very proud of is their new 3d interface once you reach the rank of king not sure if they've changed it you can basically hold a court and in this court, you can put on display your several different artifacts. Uh, you can even amass an entire army, and it is up to you to maintain these artifacts, to polish these artifacts, to sell them off, or to even scrap them if they get a bit rusty. And I do uh, have to say that I just like that they're taking another feature from CK2 and adding some polish onto it. They're modernizing it, and they're making it uh, more accessible again. Uh, there's that special word for RP players to kind of just experiment with. So I'm really looking forward to see what the modders do with this feature. Uh, I'm not too invested into relics, I'll have to be honest with you, but I do like that there's just uh, more ways for you to kind of make your characters unique. Um, with CK3, CK2, and even CK1, you have all of these characters. It's hard to keep track of them, and adding relics along with cultures... <laughs> I love the Psalter of Cuckoldry here. You can really be dynamic, and I like that the devs um, are keeping the players' mindsets in mind for a real uh, CK experience. But um, getting back away from the cuckoldry, I like that the devs are just focusing on what the players want um, and allowing you to make your characters dynamic um, and set them apart from however many um, inbred uh, successors you have uh, sitting around the court. So just love that the devs are really paying attention to players' needs and demands. I think with the modern engine, this expansion is really going to allow CK3 to shine and CK uh, as a 
franchise really um, to show off what the devs want um, to show off some of those beautiful backgrounds with the palaces and to make the player feel invested into the legacy that they're setting up to make it feel like there's a monument um, or a testament to the players and the family's bloodline that they're kind of guiding along this path um, and it's just really really uh, I think relaxing to see that CK3, apart from other Paradox projects, is really taking the time to focus on one or two aspects. They're not going too overboard and working every single thing, but they're taking one or two aspects. They're adding meaningful changes. They're reworking them. They're not completely scrapping or gunning anything. And they're just trying to refine that to a point where it's palatable for the players and it's not too, too in-depth or too, too confusing or convoluted. And I think... A lot of players will appreciate the fact that there is a lot more freedom, um, but it's not too overboard with micromanagement and all that thing. All of those pitfalls, really, that games like Stellaris kind of fall into. Uh, but despite all of their faults, I do. Um, I'm not necessarily bashing on other Paradox games. I'm just really pleased with the amount of balance the devs are choosing between micromanagement and completely um, streamlining some features. So I just have to commend again the devs on their dedication to kind of being balanced and being modest with the improvements they make, um, but not just holding back and being really, I guess, benign about the changes they make. I hope you enjoyed my very brief commentary. If you want to see me do some gameplay of CK3, I'll be trying a little Let's Play where I mess around and try to hybridize some cultures um, and see just how terribly I can manage my own little fiefdom um, and do something like a Count to Emp Empire uh, playthrough. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed my little ramble. Um, I do, like as an old player of CK2, I do look forward to seeing what the devs kind of um, put up and really go forward coming from what they've set up with this expansion, um, going on to future expansions. And I just, again, like the agency that the devs are taking with this entire project. And I'm looking forward to playing the Royal Court on February 8th. So despite um, some criticisms I have had of CK3's launch, I think this is very, very promising. And I hope to see you guys uh, playing the Royal Court, perhaps with me uh, on February 8th or later. And uh, I hope you guys have a great time playing it. I know I will. All right. Love you guys. Peace.